Right, so this evening we're going to be tying up a nap. Um, again, pretty, pretty simple pattern. Doesn't take much um, effort. It's basically a thin face popper designed by James Christmas uh, for Giant Trevelli, but I know it's caught loads of other fish all over the place. This one's a bit, uh, bit blinged out with uh, transfer foil, scaled transfer foil, so gives the body a bit of a shine. Um, I haven't coated the popper yet with a top coat um, to just seal it off and make that a little bit more durable. But uh, yeah, you just take my word for it. I'll explain how to do it in a bit, but uh, I'm not going to do that because it takes 24 hours or so to dry. Um, so the heads itself, um, pre-cut out of 10 mil foam, 10 mil wide foam. They These for a 6.0, I tend to make it a, a one inch face. Um, the back is one inch, uh, half an inch high, sorry. And lengthwise, one and a half inches long. Um, so it pretty much fits over the SL12 quite well. Uh, there's a little um, groove uh, melted into the belly um, that allows me to slot it on over the hook. Um, yeah, and I use super glue rather than epoxy, but uh, I'll show you how I do it there in a second. So, to start off with, hook wise, this is the SL12 6O. My thread is a 210 Danville flat waxed. Um, in white, you can pretty much use whatever colour you want actually because it's just going to be hidden. A um, couple of stands of Crafty Flash to start off with. So, all I've done, wrapped it around my button, slid it up, and lashed it down on top of the hook there. And trim that off a bit. Uh, then I've got two tan saddles, which uh, you'd want to be, I don't know, probably four inches or so, three and a half, four inches long. Then going to use a couple of grizzly saddles, also in tan, slightly darker. Uh, what you're going to do, concave side in, lay one on top of the other. Makes a nice thin tail, and then one grizzly on either side, like so. Then line them up on top of the hook, right on top of that flash. Oops, one, two wraps. Make sure that they're lined up parallel to the hook shank, which they are, and then tighten down on those wraps. And that is the base of your tail. Now normally I'd cut uh, the hackles off, or the stems off quite early on, but I want to try to build up a bit of bulk on this tail. So I've left them long, wrapped them all the way down the shank. Now the reason I'm leaving them long is I want to build up a bit of volume on that hook shank. Well, it's pretty much doubled the volume of the hook shank there, so it's going to give uh, more surface area for the foam to, to stick to. Um, when it comes to sticking it, that is. So then we're going to add a little pinch of white bucktail onto the belly here. Take out the little base fluff. Now, this is basically going to be used to help stop those feathers wrapping around the hook. I mean, they won't anyways, if it's tied pretty well, they shouldn't anyways, because the, the foam is going to hold them as well, but never pays to be, uh, or doesn't matter if you add a little bit of extra security with some well-placed bucktail. So I've just tied it onto the belly there, splitting it down on either side of the hook bend. And then I'm going to take some grape green, or oh, grape grey, Kind of what, it's more of a tiny grey, some people call it grape. Um, I'd call it more of a bluey grey, I suppose, or greeny grey. It's kind of like a sandstone. Right, and then pinch on top, a couple of loose wraps, just 
use your thumb which I didn't explain what I did on the uh, bottom one but I'm using my thumb there just to spread it around the hook shank so that it covers those hackle bases nice and neatly and that is essentially your tail done now to apply the head but little trick is take two standard staples that attach together leaves a nice little flat edge if you use two I'm using them just as a guide to help me uh, keep that uh, keep the head on nice and straight just lining it up make sure it's parallel to the hook which it should be when you look at it the pointy top bits that normally go through your paper pointing straight up Lash that down nice and tight Oops. tie off a thread as you can see um, that's kind of doubled up the volume of the hook shank there so gives more surface area for the for the glue to to sit on just clean out some of the I melt the groove in there leaves the little bits inside but what I'm doing is I'm just making a slightly wider groove at the back end just so that the hackles can slot in there because if you look at no, that one's already split go have a look if I stick this one on there it pushes the tail down whereas with the split ones uh, so just before I show you that so basically when you put the head on I like to roll the head on so it's the flat face is sitting just behind the eye and I push down onto those onto those staples pull the tail up and as you can see that tail is now still sitting parallel to the hook shank and is coming out nice and centrally, centrally out of that back quarter inch of foam and that's again going to help hold the tail in place stop it wrapping around the hook etc etc um, pop that off and we're going to lash it in with a bit of super glue actually I'm just going to put it into the end here split it down be fairly generous with the super glue now you've already got two little holes from the foam from earlier that just lines that up pop it out the vise make sure that it's nice and centered on the hook whoops nice and centered on the hook everything's where it should be pull that tail down and then we're going to take a crocodile clip I'm just going to clamp it down using the hook eye. I don't know if you can see it in there. Using the hook eye, using the hook eye um, to stop it clamping too much. So it's pressing that foam gap together. Just make sure that all the hairs are coming out in the right spot and all the feathers just a little bit before it tightens down. You also want to make sure that the hook. If you look between the arms, make sure that hook is uh, centrally between the uh, two clamp arms, I suppose you could call them. Right, here's one that I prepared earlier. It's been sitting in the clamp for a while. Now, you can see the uh, clamp lines there. Get a better view of how I clamp it. So it's onto that hook eye, back down, just below there feathers and tail etc so it pushes them up into that foam pop that in now I am going to be as I said making them a bit flasher so I'm going to be using masking tape getting a bit of fluff off my t-shirt because sometimes marking tape sticks really well to the foam and rips, rips chunks off but if you do that which again I learned this trick from someone else actually on Instagram 
after I messed up a live feed. Um, generally it doesn't happen, but sometimes this crappy masking tape sticks too well and then messes up the foam by ripping a nice big chunk out of it. So I've just lined that up there. I'm going to give it a quick spray. So this is a sandstone and the um, sprayer is made by a company called We Are. I have shared the link before from where I got it, um, but I do believe they're now sold out. They don't sell them anymore, so you can go and search for the We Are. I can't remember what it's called, but it's hand airbrush, I think. Um, so that was sandstone on the back. I like the two-tone heads. Don't ask me why, I just like the look of it. I honestly don't think the fish care, but uh, it does look a bit cooler in the old fly box. And then this is a green grey, I think they call it, for the front of the head. Right, now that that's done, normally what I do for a lot of my, uh, if I'm doing big batches of flies, I use uh, an adhesive spray um, to... Uh, Actually, I might just do that now quickly because I can. Uh, do I have it there? That's no, Patek's. There we go. Plastic Fostac. Um, I'll just pop this off. I'm just what I'm doing. It's just folding out. What are these things called? Post-it note, just around the tail so the glue doesn't grab onto it. Give it a nice even coat. Leave that to dry for a little while. Peel off the uh, masking tape, like so. See, it's stuck really well, so I'm just going to pop that in there because my fingers are getting in the way. There we go. Just leave that to dry for a second. I see bubbles forming. Actually, you probably can't because the camera's not good enough, but uh, there's bubbles forming anyways. While that is drying, I'm just going to add a bit of red to the face. And again, if you don't have uh, an air sprayer, that's fine. You can hand draw on there, you can draw stripes, you can draw all sorts of stuff. Let's have a look there. Looks good, almost dry. I was going to use UV, but uh, the UV glue that I have is almost finished. So this is transfer foil, a scale transfer foil. It's got a bit of shine to it. Probably won't see it in a second because the camera doesn't really like it. But I'm just laying it on the top, pushing it down. And then folding it over the edge, popping it back the other side, and then just using something sharp, running it over like so. Sharp edge just helps it transfer. Now, because of the masking tape, I'll have nice, neat sort of lines on there. And then when you peel it off, it looks oh so pretty. Can you see that? There we go. So that's why I like transfer foil. A bit of a like a bit of shine. So last but not least, 
well, second to last thing, we're just going to chuck on a couple of 10 mil eyes. One and two. That's your eyes, make sure they're nice and even. And then I'm going to get my red marker back. Just going to pop a gill. Just like that. And that is your nap. Nice and thin face popper. And that's a James Christmas pattern. Um, so to top coat this, I would use Gorilla Glue Crystal Clear, um, but I'll be leaving it 24 hours at least um, because the crease lines will come out of the foam and give you nice neat sides but um so i won't be doing that for another another day or two anyways thanks for watching